Yes, hi, welcome back to the episode 3 of our video lecture presentation here in CLJ2, Human Rights Education. So now we are going to talk about the state, its police power, and human rights, okay? So by the way, again, my name is Miss Tanshal Ramos. I am your faculty in charge here in this subject. So I hope you learn from our today's presentation. So let's first start with what is the role of, of the states, okay? So ano nga ba ang role ng states natin, ng state, as to human rights, okay? The pr promotion and protection of human rights by individual states has an internal as well as external dimension. So, ang lahat ng mga bansa na meron tayo dito sa globe natin, sa mundo, uh, they have both internal and external dimension as to promotion and protection of human rights. So, internationally, states can raise their voices whenever human rights are violated. So, as you can hear from news, read from news na if there is a situation wherein a violation of human rights have been conducted in a certain country and it is being raised uh, into international human rights courts, ayan, they have the capacity to do so. Okay? So states are actively involved in, this, in the development of human rights standards, institutions, and supervisory mechanism. Since ang state, ang gobyerno, ang nagmamanage ng isang bansa, malaki yung role niya as to how a certain state will develop the international human rights standards, okay? Into a better application in the country itself. So they are the first to bring violations to the attention of international fora. And furthermore, have the capacity to stimulate positive developments with regard to compliance with human rights standards. So we have human rights standards. Internationally, this is already set by um, uh, the human rights, International Human Rights Declaration. So ano bang role ng mga bansa? Anong role ng, ng gobyerno, ng state dito? Ang role ng state dito is that kung ano man yung standard na meron ng International Human Rights Declaration, that standard should be followed. Also, that standard should be given an improvement. Uh, may, mabig, maibigay yun sa mga tao with an improvement as to its application to the country. Since iba't iba po ang, ang mga bansa natin, for example, we have the uh, third world country, kagaya natin, iba ang application ng human rights sa atin eh. Hindi ko naman sinasabing iba as the first, pero there are instances na kung saan mas nakakabuti, mas nakakaangat sila because of their status of living. Okay? So let's move forward on this. So at the national level, it is imperative imperative that states comply with international standards. So these standards, however, often provide only the minimum safeguards as it is thus preferable that, that states provide a higher level of protection, example, by making avail available resources for a higher enjoyment of certain socio-economic rights. So, kagaya nga nang sabi ko sa inyo, at the national level, our government should be complying to these international standards. But of course, since these are just minimum, preferably, the, the states, the government should give... Um, higher level of protection, higher level of implementation. Kagaya ng nabangkit dito na, for example, may, pwedeng uh, ma-improve pa yung enjoyment ng mga um, community ng mga tao sa kanilang certain socio-economic rights. Now, what is police power? Since our topic is actually the role of the states, the police power, and the, the, the relationship between the two. So, tapos na natin ang role of states. So, in summary, ano bang role of state? The role of the state is to comply with the minimum international human rights standards. It is the role of the state to protect our human rights, okay? Now, it is not only the role of, of, of the states on, on that matter, but rather it is also the role of the state to improve the international standards as to application to 
the country per se. Now, let's move forward to police power. Ano nga ba tong police power? So, I have included in this presentation, actually, many um, definition of police power because it varies, actually. So, pag sinabi natin police power, this is according to the Biotech Law LSU that edu, edu slash map that police power. So, you could look into this into the internet, uh, from the internet. So, police power is the right to protect the country and its population from threats to the public health and safety. So, ito yung um, karapatan, okay, para maprotektahan ng bansa, ang population from any kinds of threats, such as the public health and safety. So, if you're going to uh, apply this from the recent events that we have, Last year, diba, we have the enhanced community quarantine and the police power was heightened by that because for public health and safety, our movement has been um, limited. Okay, So the term police power predates the development of organized police forces. So nung kan -on -on, <laughs> kan -on -on po, we all we already have police power. Yun nga lang, it is very different from the police power that we have right now. Na sa application nila before. So, anong ibig kong sabihin? So, ang police power, it actually did not develop until the post-colonial period. So, in the colonial period, police power was used to control nuances such as tanneries that foul the air and water in towns to prevent the sale of bad food and to quarantine persons who were infected with communicable diseases. So, ganun lamang yung police power before. Unlike ngayon, di ba? They have... Um, a wider police power, of course, with the authority from the government and with um, the control from the different uh, laws that we have. So many of the colonies had active boards of health to administer the police power. So this was one of the main governmental functions in the colonial period. So take note that this was in colonial period. So what now? What is police power? So police power here in the Philippines is referred as to the power to promote the general welfare and public interest, okay? So, police power, okay? Police power, it is the power to promote the general welfare and public interest. Okay? So, ito daw yung kapangyarihan para um, maibigay ng ang, 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 hindi ko na naman maaalala, alam ang Tagalog nito, promotion ng general welfare and public interest. Ano pa? It is also to enact such laws in relation to persons and property as may promote public health, public morals, public safety, and the general welfare of each inhabitant. Also, to preserve public order and to prevent offenses against the state and to establish for the intercourse of citizen with citizens those rules of good manners and good neighborhood calculated to prevent Conflicts of rights. So where did I get this? It actually from the lawfield.net juries and it's uh, it's actually uh, part of a uh, summary na nakita ko. Okay? So yun nga. So sa, sa bansa natin, ng police power, kumbaga if we're going to summarize this, it's, it, is, it is the power of promotion of the police as to protection of the general welfare, promotion of general welfare, and public interest. Could it be from... Uh, promotion of public health, public morals, public safety, and general welfare. So, as currently in use both in Philippine and American decisions then, police power legislation usually has reference to regulatory measures restraining either the rights to property or liberty of private individuals. Again, take note, this is again another definition of police power. Okay, so police power legislation, this usually has reference to regulatory measures restraining either the rights to property or liberty of private individuals. So, hindi lang ito promotion of general welfare, welfare and public safety, but rather, it is also the regulate, regulatory measures na kung saan um, nalilimit yung uh, mga rights, certain rights that we have as private individuals, such as right to property and right to liberty, which is for the general welfare. It should always be for the general welfare, okay? So it is undeniable, however, that one of its earliest definitions, valid then as well as now, given by Marshall's successor, Chief Justice Tani, does not limit its scope, curtailment of rights 
whether of liberty or property of private individuals. So, see, there are so many definitions of um, police power. Pero ang lagi niyang tinutumbok is the promotion of public welfare and uh, a general welfare and public safety. So, what are the police powers of state? So, from all of the definitions that we have mentioned, how are we going to summarize the police powers of the state? Okay, so we have defined police power. Now, what are police powers of a state? So, they are nothing more or less than the powers of government inherent in every sovereignty to extent of its to the extent of its dominions. And whether a state passes a quarantine law or a law to punish offenses or to establish courts of justice or requiring certain instruments to be recorded or to regulate commerce within its own limits in every case, it exercises the same power. That is to say, the power of sovereignty, the power to govern men and the things within the limits of its domain. Very beautiful. Ang ganda ng definition na ano nga ba ang police powers of a state? It is the power of sovereignty, the power to govern men and things within the limits of its domain. So kahit ano man yung ipasa niya, as long as it is within the limits of its domain, ibig sabihin, it is not violating its uh, basic rights, it is not violating the national, uh, the international human rights, then it is indeed police power of state. Okay, now what is the importance of human rights to law enforcement? Ano nga bang import, importansya ng human rights natin sa law enforcement? Okay? So in the performance of the duty, law enforcement officials shall respect and protect human dignity and maintain and uphold the human rights of all persons. That is where, that is based from what? That is based from the state's Article 2 of the United Nations Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner's Code of Conduct for Law Enforcement Officials of 1979. So malinaw ha, that is very clear. So, in the performance of their duty, okay, law enforcement officials shall respect and protect human dignity and maintain and uphold the human rights of all persons. Now, the question here is that, what is the, lim the limitation of a police officer of an uh, or an law enforcer in the performance of his or her duty? Dito tayo nagkakatalo eh. If you are working in a private organization and sinabi natin, Tapos na shift mo. Then tapos na shift mo. You're done with it. Balik ka na lang on the next shift. But if you're actually a law enforcer, lalo na dito sa bansa natin, to where um, you are uh, serving uh, the public, you are serving the government, um, you are the one enforcing the law, actually, there is a big problem as to the performance of their duty. Sometimes, even though kahit wala na nga sa shift, hindi na nga nakapasok sa duty, it's vacation na, vacation na nung, nung police officer, as long as duty calls, go. Kung baga, this law shall be uphold na kahit ano man yan. In short, 24-7, no matter what, off duty ka man. If you are a law enforcer, you shall respect and protect human dignity and maintain and uphold the human rights of all persons. Actually, this one is not only the function of a law enforcer. Kung titignan natin, each and every one of us has the duty to respect and protect human dignity no matter what okay pero binigyan lang ng emphasis ito ng UNH uh UNHRO na when a police officer when a law enforcement is performing his duty dapat he or she is always respecting and protecting the human dignity and also maintaining and upholding the human rights of all persons no exceptions now law enforcement often seen as the mediator between the legal structure and social conditions, has been under fire internationally on the basis of not fulfilling its mandate to protect. So, hindi tayo, hindi na to bago sa itong statement na to sa atin na ang law enforcement daw, hindi naman to talaga daw, it's true, that the law enforcement is actually under fire. Ibig sabihin, the law enforcement is of is true. Why? Since the law enforcement is in between, see, if this is the, from our uh, criminal justice system, diba? This is the criminal, I, where is my hand? This is the criminal, this is the law enforcement, and this is the, uh, what do we call, uh, criminal justice system. So it is, it is in the center. It is the mediator between the legal structure, which is the CJS, and the social conditions, which is us, na, na civilian, okay? 
So marami ng beses na na, na, na talagang inuusig ang law enforcement. Not only in our country, it's also in other countries like what we have in US, the black uh, movement. Okay? Black Lives Matter. Okay? Yun yun. See, it's, it's a very um, sensationalized event yung nangyaring yun na uh, why do black people have to suffer with that kind of discrimination? And recently, di ba, yung mga Asian people outside or in, in US, they're also being racially, uh, racially discriminated. In the country per se, do we have this kind of problem? Of course, when the, uh, when the president has conducted its um, war against drugs and many police officers are subjected to this issue, actually, the entire Philippine National Police was subjected to this issue na because of their quota, kailangan nilang maabot ito. May mga ginagawa na silang hindi, ka, uh, hindi naaayon sa batas. So, this is a big issue as to the image of the law enforcement, not only in the Philippines, but also internationally. So, what happens when the system put in place to ensure the protection of their inalienable rights instead violates them? So, paano naman kung ang mga pulis na ang nagva-violate ng ating mga inalienable rights? Remember, ang human rights natin, it is inalienable. Ang sagot ni Theodore Roosevelt, okay, ito ang kanyang sagot. Order without liberty and liberty without order are equally destructive. Very beautiful, di ba? Ma, uh, himayan natin yan. Sabi niya, ang order daw, nang wala namang freedom, okay, and ang freedom naman, nang wala namang order, they are equally destructive. This means both order and liberty should work together in order for it to prosper, in order for it to work properly. Okay? So, but what is the importance of human rights to law enforcement? Ano bang importansya talaga ng human rights sa mga police, sa mga law enforcers natin? So, that is what we're going to talk about. Okay? Pag-uusapan pa natin yan on our next slide. So, so, this presentation aims to discuss whether human rights and law enforcement are intricately linked and if so, under what conditions. So, uh, this one is from USIDHR.org. So, here is the importance of human rights in the law enforcement work. Ano nga bang importance of human rights sa law enforcement work? So we have the United Nations articles clearly outline the role of policy is to be representative of and responsive and accountable to the community as a whole. So that is policy. Para tayo ay mag, para ang mga law enforcers ay maging representative, maging responsive and accountable to the community. So that is, according to the Northeastern University professor and former dean at its College of Criminal Justice, we have Jack R. Green. He stated that the police are the first and central actors in mediating between social conditions and legal structure. Which is very true. Nabanggit ko na kanina. The police are the mediator. The law enforcement are the mediator. This is the social structure, the social condition, and this is the legal structure. Who is in the center? The center is actually the law enforcers. So, local policing is on the front stage of the legal system and invested with considerable discretion in determining balance order with liberty. So, dyan pumapasok yung tinatawag natin discretion. Since mediator po ang mga kap ang police, ang law enforcer natin, dyan napakalaki ng value ng discretion. Nila. Kasi, what if may nangyaring krimen pero based on the discretion of the police officers, walang nangyaring krimen. Then the legal structure will not move. What if Wala naman talagang nangyari, pero sa police na yun is merong nangyari. He have a wrong discretion on that one. The balance will not be there as to the uh, criminal justice system and to the social conditions, di ba? The police are meant to enforce and protect the rights of the community while simultaneously practicing and ensuring that they adhere to the laws. That is very important, no? Uh, Oo, ka, trabaho ng pulis na i-enforce at protektahan ang mga karapatan natin. Pero make sure, they have to make sure that at all times they are following the law on that. Okay? Kasi pag ganun, baka sila lang nakaka-violate ng karapatan natin, di ba? 
So the United Nations Professional Training Series number no. 5 highlights the problems of the myth within law enforcement training, which is the insistence on bending the rules to ensure the law is upheld. Okay? So sabi ng UNPTS number no. 5, yung sinasabi nilang bend, um, bending the rules, Susko. That is a big myth in the law enforcement industry. Okay? So from forcibly ending demonstrations to removing individuals from their property to torturing detainees, law enforcement without human rights taken into consideration is lethal to the real realization of a world with inalienable human rights. So kung ang mga kapulisan natin ay hindi tinitake into consider ang batas natin and they are just always bending the rules for, for themselves or for somebody higher than them, then wala, hindi natin ma-achieve yung, yung talagang sinasabi na ang, ang human rights are inalienable. Okay? Now, the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action states that the administration of justice, including law enforcement, is essential to the full and non-discriminatory non-discriminatory realization of human rights. In short, para hindi ma-violate, hindi ma-discriminate ang human rights na meron tayo, the law enforcement together with the government, together with the criminal justice system, should work together, should work hand in hand on it. Had hand on hand on this. So it goes on to recommend education as a necessary means to ensure law enforcement officials know they are enforcing. That's why you have this human rights education from your college level. Why? It is because it is what the Vienna Declaration and Program of Action recommended na dapat ma-educate ang mga law enforcers. Ma-educate sila kahit sila yung nag-aaral pa lang, kahit hindi pa talaga sila nasa mismong law enforcement uh, industry or agency. Those aspiring should be educated as to what is human rights. Okay? So law enforcement must work to dispel the bending the rules mentality or we are at risk of an assault and human dignity and a barrier to effective policy. Which is very true, di ba? Okay. Dapat matanggal yung bending the rules na yan eh. Uh, Doon na lang tayo sa application pa nga lang eh. There are uh, application in the law enforcement agencies. Um, I am going to tell you, I am going to uh, expound. Hindi naman expound, pero I'm going to tell you na hindi lingid sa kaalaman namin, kaalaman ninyo for sure, na meron at merong bending the rules sa application. So, meron at merong mga nakakapasok kahit na hindi naman talaga sila physically qualified because they have their ninong and ninang could be, di ba? So, yun. Example lang ng bending the rules, okay? So, we have also here the 10 basic human rights standards for law enforcement officials. So, ano nga ba yung mga basic human rights standards nila? Okay? So, for now... I will be ending the discussion because it's already 20 minutes. I will be discussing this on a different video for your mind to um, rest for a while and to ingest kung ano man yung mga sinabi ko. I'll be coming back with another uh, video recording on this. So, see you on the next one. And that will be our episode 4. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to message me. I will be answering your messages on Tuesday. Bye. Thank you.